show. Head over to Memphis. Talk to my man, Anthony Sane. AllGrizzlies.com. The Grizzly SI page. Anthony, what's good, my brother? Man, I'm good, bro. How y'all been, man? Man, trying to deal with this pandemic, bro. Uh, our governor dumb as hell. Uh, no, no mask mandate. So we trying to survive over here, bro. Uh, yes, sir. Trying to do the same here in Memphis, man. No doubt, well, bro. Uh, first, let me ask you, what are the, how do the Grizz feel about the NBA's uh, restart with the rule if you're within four games of the eighth seed and you, you can out can compete for a play-in? And the Grizzlies, to me, are in a position to get shafted because I think this was made to get Zion some run on TV, to be honest with you, my brother. Well, yeah, they've got they've got several reasons why they say they're doing it. Uh, you know, of course, they have the TV contract and playing those eight games. Because, you know, the guys wouldn't get paid if they just went straight to the playoffs. They'd be basically playing for free. So those eight games are what they're really getting paid. Those eight regular season games are really what they're getting paid for. They get paid a little differently when it comes down to the playoffs. They're not getting their regular salary checks or whatever. Uh, I mean, but, you know, if you talk to the players, you talk to Coach uh, Taylor Jenkins, they're being super professional about it. But you could just tell that you, you, you have to feel away, man. You know what I mean? These guys uh, were a team that was predicted to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. They severely overachieved this year. And now they're uh, they they've been they're in the AC. They've been in the AC uh, for a while uh, this season. Um, teams like Portland, New Orleans, of, of uh, underachieved in my opinion. Uh, especially a team like uh, Portland, who was in the Western Conference Finals last year, and now they're what eight games under five hundred. Uh, I don't see why anyone should feel sorry for them or you know whatever. I think they've underachieved really the whole season. On uh, the Pelicans as well, and now the Grizzlies find themselves uh, having to having to gain a spot that they've been sitting in for the whole. Not the whole year before, a nice chunk of the season. Uh, I'm sure that they feel a way about it, but like I said, they've been professional. Uh, even professional beyond their years, man. This Grizzlies team is very young. Uh, one of the youngest teams in the NBA. If they make the playoffs, they would be the youngest team to make the playoffs since uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder team uh, back when Kevin Durant and, uh, and Russell Westbrook were there, when they were a very young team as well. Uh, but like I said, I personally don't like it. But, man, I just think this team is cut out for it, man. I think they're locked in. They're focused. Every time we talk to them down in Orlando, uh, they look like they're just ready to take care of business to go on the court and, and uh, prove the battle wrong. And the schedule to me, bro, is like, man, look, I'm seeing the Blazers, the Spurs, the Pelicans, the Jazz, the Thunder, the Raps, the Bucks. They, they can pretty much kill the competition in the first few games there, but then you got to, on the back end of that, those tough Eastern teams you got to play. So how you feeling about the schedule with the Grizzlies playing them eight games and how you looking for them? I feel like they have to really kill those first three games out there to really stamp their competition and keep them out from that four-game buffer from them. Uh, this is the way I look at it, man. I'm really optimistic about the Grizzlies' schedule. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, they got Toronto, they got Boston, Milwaukee, all the last three games of the season. Man, those teams don't have anything to play for. And, and we're, we're talking about playing in the pandemic. This is a totally different situation than, than, than any, even a regular season game where they probably they still have, wouldn't have anything to play for. But uh, I think those teams that are uh, have, have their positions set in the East, they're not, gonna, they're not going out there trying to beat the Grizzlies. They're going to go out there, warm up a little bit, just keep their guys loose. And that, those are probably going to be give me games when it all comes down to it. Um, I'm sure they're going to try to rest their stars against us. I don't really think those games are going to matter at all. But those should be very winnable games for the Grizzlies. Those games in the beginning, uh, San Antonio Spurs, uh, they already were down the Marcus Aldridge, and they uh, had another player out. I can't remember who it was. Uh, another their power four. I see his face. Can't think of his name right now. He's going to be out for the uh, rest of the season. So, um, you know, if, I think those those games, like you said, against Portland, against New Orleans, if the Grizzlies can win those two games, really sets the tone for the rest of the eight seeding game. Most definitely. And how's the team health wise that we last talked? Jaron was hurt, some guys were hurt on, on the roster. So where are the Grizzlies right now health wise? And what Coach Jenkins talked about for us the rotations brave well, for a full roster and everybody being healthy. Uh Coach Jenkins isn't saying anything uh in particular about the rotations, but just observing the team and just uh, uh looking at practice video, uh they, they put some, you know, kind of montage videos together of practice and things like that and just talking to the guys. They're hundred percent healthy. They have 15 available guys uh, uh, ready for the roster who are all healthy, uh, in shape, ready to go. Justice Winslow, who we haven't seen yet at all, he's ready to go. He's in shape. He's going to be out there making his debut in Orlando, as uh, well as Jaron Jackson, Brandon Clark, and also Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen was out for a lot this year, uh, but he's going. He's ready to go. Um, he's returning from his injury. I showed a clip of him getting some dunks in in practice. Uh, John Morant picked up uh, 12 pounds over the break. 
of uh, pure muscle. Yeah, man, that, that Grizzly team, they're locked in. They're, they're ready to go. Some of the Grizzlies guy got a um, quote unquote through the pandemic a free offseason pretty much with their young guys to get better, grow, and I feel like this is really gonna help them. If it don't help them this year, next year when the season starts in December, if there's a season, they'll be ready to go from this right here. Yeah, I definitely agree, man. Uh this team has already done enough. Uh they've done so much already this season. Uh this is all just bonus play. Um uh, I, I don't think they think that way. I think they're locked in and determined to make that eight seed. And I'm not going to predict the upset against the Lakers, but, you know, the Lakers' backcourt is, is starting to diminish. They've already lost Ray John Rondo and uh, Avery Bradley uh, due to uh, injury and also Avery Bradley's personal decision not to play in Orlando. But uh, when, when you got to guard John Morant, uh, you know, in four, five, six, seven games, it's going to be you know, it's gonna be a tough haul uh, for, for the Lakers. Uh, I can see the Grizzlies possibly getting the game from them if the Grizzlies are able to hold on to the A.C. Most definitely, and, and without being a home court event at Staples Center, and they can get two games because y- y'all were you both playing on a neutral court with no fans. Right. So mm-hmm. that that down there right there, Anthony, I think is going to make the playoffs be really interesting because without the home court advantage, there you just got you playing basketball on the right. hardwood. It's just basketball, nothing, nothing, nothing extra. We're, so I think it's going to be real mm-hmm. interesting this come season, come playoff time after the season. Oh, I totally over. agree. I'm looking forward to hearing some trash talk on the court too, man, in full HD, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. You know, yeah, hey, I'm, th- I'm saying, bro, hey, you've got to be – it's going to be great, man. And now, for the, the Grizzlies, how will they force COVID testing? Uh, I, I didn't – I can't remember the reports about who tested positive. So how are the Grizzlies being forced, the COVID testing, guys testing positive and being safe with the virus as they ramped up for this trip to, to the bubble in, in, in uh, Orlando? That's an interesting thing, man. Not not to really gauge, you know, how focused someone is on whether or not they have COVID nineteen. But as a it's kinda of, it's kinda of odd because this Grizzlies team is like I said, it's one of the youngest teams in the league. And you would think these are the guys that be out wilding out, you know, have to tell them to do this and breaking quarantine and there hasn't been anything. No issues, no disciplinary issues as far as breaking quarantine, uh, no cases of COVID nineteen the whole time. Ever since the from March tenth, uh when when March eleventh, I'm sorry, when the league was suspended. Up until now, no cases of, of any Grizzlies players uh, having COVID nineteen. So, uh, you know, like you, I, I said that you can't mark uh, maturity by that or being focused on that. But they're doing what they have to do to stay on the court, man, and, and, and that's going to be crucial in Orlando uh, with being the type of situation they're playing in. Now, what the guy said about the bubble in your Zoom or um, Amy availability is with the team down in in Orlando. What the guy said about the bubble being down there and experience so far. There's some interesting quotes that came out from the bubble, man. John Morant, I uh, asked John, what does he think about the bubble? And John was like, you know, the bubble sign. He's like, I'm not a silver spoon guy. I'm, I'm more of a, a ramen noodle guy. So it, that that quote kind of took off uh, in Memphis. And John said that just kind of speaking to John's humility and just his, his nature that really vibes with the city of Memphis and just the South in general. And then uh, uh, Gorgie uh, Jane, uh, one of our veteran players, uh, native of Senegal, he, he spoke about, the conditions, and he said, "Well, the, the bubble is probably safer than anywhere in America right now," and that kind of got some attention uh, yesterday as well. So the guys, they're fine. They're, just, they're, they're younger guys. Uh, they're used to an AAU type environment, so uh, they're ready to go. And what have they been saying about the Black Lives Matter movement and social justice movement? Because I know uh, guys will get to put messages on their jerseys for the first, first few game, seeding games down there. So what have the guys been saying about the, the George Floyd uh, protest and Brown Taylor and everybody who's uh, now aware of what you and I already know as black men? Uh, things ain't what it should be for us all out here. Uh, uh, some of the guys have voiced what they're going to wear on their, on their uniform. I know that um, Gorgie James said he's going to wear Black Lives Matter on the back of his. Um, and I think Anthony Tolliver said he's going to wear something. I can't remember the specific phrase that he used, but it's one about supporting black business, black, black infrastructure, black neighborhoods, group something. I can't remember what he said it's called. Um, all the guys seem to be uh, really passionate about it, especially guys like Justin Winslow, who was out on the front line doing things, as well as uh, Tyus Jones. They've been very vocal about it. Jaron Jackson as well. Uh, John Moran, of course, uh, accident removal of statue. Uh, in uh, Murray, where you went to college at. So these bunch of young, uh, awake guys uh, down with that Grizzlies team. And uh, I'm looking forward to whatever they decide to do as a team or as individuals. Now, we're going to take it back real fast here. You know, um, I could, we talked about this when I came on the show last in February here. I feel like this, Anthony, um, you, the Hawks should model what the Grizzlies are doing. 
because we are way mm-hmm. behind you all for rebuild. So I rebuild about the same time. We are way behind. Our, your yeah. young guys ahead of our young guy for sure for, on both sides of the court. So I, I would hope to mm-hmm. see that our our team will model what you guys have done in Memphis. I feel like they've rebuilt and retooled on the fly the right way and not went so, so young that you can't have some vets around that can actually contribute and not just be there as figureheads per se. Right, right. Uh, I like I like some of the things Atlanta's doing. It seems like they tried to uh, pattern themselves after maybe the Golden State Warriors, something like the Golden State Warriors fight or whatever. And I think I don't know if that was the best move for them to do. I think they should have just got the best players available because that's what Golden State did. <laughs> they didn't really have a, a plan of, of, of action of what they wanted to do. They just so happened to draft two of the best shooters of all time, and that happened to be the, that looked like what the plan was. But, you know, I think Atlanta should have just got the best players available. It seems like they were just trying to make a mini Golden State team. But, uh, you know, lightning doesn't always uh, strike twice, man. Sometimes you just got to get the best players available. Yeah, and, no, no, uh, I think that's what the Grizzlies are doing. Uh, yeah, I think that's what the Grizzlies are doing. They went and got Brandon Clark. They just chased after him because they knew he was a, fa- a talent that was falling in the draft, and they went after him. And they got Brandon, and they just made it fit. And I think that's something that uh, the Hawks should consider as well. I'm Shout out to you guys' arena down there too, man. That when they re- I, I, I went to the arena since they rebuilt it. Uh, you guys have an awesome arena down there. Oh, the arena, the arena's nice. It's never filled up, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks like it's very untouched. Yeah, it's like a lot of stuff never knocked the dust off of the thing. Yeah. I will say that. <laughs> yeah, last one I got <laughs> for you, bro, is this. Um, I'm scared for Lloyd Pierce, man. Uh, year three, last guaranteed year on his deal, team option after the next year. Trey Young does not want him in Atlanta. He, he hates to be held accountable for his lack of defense. I thought like Lopez is the perfect guy for the organization, but Trey Young's going to end up getting him fired or not retained if, after next year. If that's what the Hawks don't make to make the playoffs come next year as well. I'm scared for Lloyd. He's a great guy. I feel like that Trey has it out for him because he holds him accountable for not playing defense. Here's the thing, man. Lloyd Pierce is a guy that came to Memphis. Uh, he was here, I think, during the Lionel Hollins era. He was here. Sure was. Was, uh, uh, yeah, he was here back in the day. So, with that being said, you know, he's a defensive guy. But Lloyd's got to remember, man, this is a player's league. Uh, after Lloyd, Lloyd Pierce is gone, whether that's next year, five years from now, the Atlanta Hawks are going to be remembered for Trey Young. What, what happened with the, the Trey Young draft? That's, that's what Atlanta's going to be known for. So, what he has to do, he has to adjust to his player. He has to adjust to his superstar. James Harden is one of the best scorers in the NBA. He probably never will be a good defender. But Houston's not going to, you know, keep a coach and get rid of James Harden. You know what I mean? So no, what Atlanta has to do, which goes back to drafting, you have to build a, you have to build a roster around Trey Young. You can't, you may can't go get your shooting guard who's, you know, uh, a shooter who doesn't play defense. You may have to go get, you know, a, a reliable, uh, maybe three and D guy who can defend and knock down a three, three pointer occasion. Uh, I think they were so busy trying to, be this, you know, Warriors light team like I talked about. I don't think they built the roster right around Trey Young. You've got to get guys that can hide your weaknesses, especially when you have a guy with the talent of Trey Young. Most well, definitely. Anthony, man, thank you for your time. Today, my brother, hope you and your kids stay safe in Memphis, man. Hope to see you yes, if sir. we can have a season next year where we can travel, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we got to get some kind of game going on, man. We need this vaccine to come on. Yes, you better believe it, bro. Hey, thanks for your time, brother. Have a good one, man. Oh, yes, sir. All right, man. My heart skips skipping the beach and not close enough so that space between you and me, let's lose it. The way you're dancing, swaying to the music, girl, that body and how you move it. Every time you cross my mind, girl, I lose it. Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist. Okay. I think you know what you're doing to me, you got my- With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. All the stars are closer. Tell me what you gonna do to me. Confrontation ain't nothing new to me. You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Till the tears run down from my eyes, Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. 
Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. All right, you for the Boss Man Show. Time for my man to join me from Memphis. Jesse Smith, bro. Hot life over there now. It's not a one today, man. Hey, it's hot. Man, the heat index is like 100, 103 degrees today, man. So it's a hot one uh, up there, man. Bro, before we get to the segment today, how long the battles about kids go to school in Memphis? I know you got have a young son or daughter there, so... How, what, what are you hearing about that, man, for us, the, the school kids about the school in Memphis, man? Man, you know, right now, they're kind of leaving it up to the parents. You know, if you want to keep your kids home and online learning, uh, you can do that. Or if you want to send them to school, there's a deadline, man, they're coming up in a few days where we have to decide on, you know, uh, you know what we're going to do with the kids, man. My kids are staying home. I don't, I don't trust the school system. Uh, the school system's ability to keep them safe. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna be at home this semester. Man, no doubt, most definitely, well, bro. Stay in Tennessee, man. Derek Henry got him a contract today, four years, fifty million, bro. Um, he's gonna get for this season coming up. He's gonna get for three million dollars guaranteed, twelve million dollars signing bonus. Um, next year fully guaranteed, ten point five million in twenty twenty two. 12 million in 2023, 12.5. So he's guaranteed 25.5 million over two years, which is 2.66 more than what he got on the franchise tag. So, how you liking Derek Henry's contract and him being Tennessee for at least two more years guaranteed? I like it. Um, you know, I think at this point in his career, he deserves it. He, like I said, leading rusher uh, last year. Led the league in rushing touchdowns. We had with fourteen, if I'm not mistaken, uh, rushing touchdowns last year. Uh, he deserves it, man. You know, he's not got it. He's not like the Elliott type where he's gonna, you know, whine and complain about his contract or anything like that, man. He's gonna go out there and he earned it, man. So he doesn't have to uh, play on the franchise tag and got the extension, got the uh, guaranteed money, you know, at the running back position. So I think it's a great deal. I think he's gonna get whenever the season does. Uh, uh, kick back off again, man. You're going to get, I think it's like a, a very similar season this upcoming season as he had last year, man. I think Derrick Henry still has probably about a good two or three years, prime years left uh, in him, man, because he came out with 2016 mm-hmm. out of Alabama, man. So he's already with four years in. So going to year five, man, uh, I think if he stays healthy, I think he could put up another, you know, close to 1,500 yard season uh, again, man, for over the next couple of seasons. And then you know, of course, the eventual decline of, of all running backs. I think that he would definitely get that 2022 year at 12 million, but 2023, a little bit skeptical about. I'm not sure he'll get there for mm-hmm. a few years, 12.5 million. Yeah. Not yeah, sure, I hear you, man. Not sure about that one. Another guy got a contract. Defensive end for the Chiefs. Chris Jones, JC, four years, eighty million, with sixty million functionally guaranteed. And those, the Chiefs' new thing is guarantee mechanisms in March. There, the same thing they did for Mahomes. Talked about that last week. So Chris Jones gets sixteen point two million this year guaranteed. No signing bonus. Twenty one five in twenty twenty one. Twenty three. Oh. 2.3 in 2022 and 20 million in 2023. Somebody gets a contract, four year deal, $80 million, 67 guaranteed, so three years pretty much in his pocket, and he can get back to the market before he turns 30. Hey, I love it. Like I said, uh, the Chiefs said, you know, hey, there's some money to go around. I have to, uh, that home. And man, they feel an opportunity here where they can possibly. Matter of fact, boss, I think the Chiefs, you heard it here first. I think the Chiefs can go uh, uh, three feet, man. I think they're going to be the first team to uh, 3 in the Super Bowl era. I think they're going to do it, man. You think so? I, I got a crazy feeling. It's like we've gotten so close with other dynasties. You know, the Patriots having an opportunity. Uh, the Cowboys having an opportunity. The 49ers having an opportunity. I think the Chiefs are the dynasty of the 2020s. And they're going to, if they if they don't do it, they're going to come mighty close to it, man. But I got a feeling we're going to see a, a 3 P run here by the Chiefs, man. Okay, okay, I, I can dig that. I can you heard it here first, man. Hey, JC yeah. calling it. He, he called it. He's claiming it right now, folks. It's for our church about that. He's claiming it already. <laughs> in, in my homes, hey, he trusts. They'll call me. <laughs> they'll call me Negro Dumbass for nothing, man. <laughs> I, I hear that. So, bro. <laughs> so, bro, we got, we got this uh, social justice front. King Steels was a protest in front of the 
Kentucky Attorney General's house with a lot of different celebrities got arrested, spent the night in jail, got arrested this morning. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny. Well, not funny, but he spent more time in jail than Brown Taylor's Taylor spent in jail. Him and all those people who protested mm-hmm. yesterday. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, civil disobedience is a real result of an overnight stay in jail, typically. And he hit him with felony charges. Really? Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, right? Uh, I heard about that, man. Yeah, you know, they had, uh, like, the King Steels was out there. Shout out to those guys, man. Uh, Trey the Truth, you know, uh, rapper from Houston, man. He was out there. Uh, Portia from uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. She was out there in Old Yandy from Love and Hip Hop. They all got were out there and got arrested, man. The, uh, the district attorney up there, Daniel Cameron, up there in Louisville, man. And he just, uh, he's sitting on his hands right now and not willing to go ahead and bring forth charges. But um, what he has to understand, like, the outcry of the nation right now, man, it's not going to stop until charges are brought against those uh, those officers, man, you know? So, um, yeah, like, close it. He's still, man, a guy has been at the forefront of social justice issues for the last few years now. Um, like I said, man, we need more like him. And uh, like I said, man, keep Brianna, Brianna Taylor's name out there, man. Call call the district attorney in Lu- in Louisville, man. Like, flood the phone lines. Do do it, do whatever you can, man, to charge the bar against those officers who, uh, who murdered her. Most definitely. And we're going to go off a little more WMA story. Uh, later, Don, uh, Don, who has Lyme disease, takes 64 pills a day, bro, and they told her that she cannot be medically exempt from playing in, in the WBA bubble. If I don't know what high risk is, if you're taking 64 pills a day, I don't know what they doctors are thinking about in the WNBA other than about the money. Yeah, that's crazy. I know she is one of the biggest stars. Maybe, maybe the biggest star. Uh, in WNBA when it comes down to marketability. But uh, I knew I knew I knew about her issues. I, I I didn't know that it was sixty four pills she has to take. That's crazy, bro. Um uh, yeah, if I was her, I wouldn't play. Uh in that situation, man. You know, it, it's not worth it. Uh it's a, it's I hate to say it, but the it's the WNBA, not the NBA. Of course the WNBA matters, but uh, ain't nobody, ain't nobody really sick with WNBA, man. Like they, they really didn't have to come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they could wait to 2021 to play this season. Nobody was really checking for the WNBA anyway. But uh, yeah, that's that's a tough deal, man. I, I don't know if I was in her position if I could uh, uh, play under those conditions, man. And the, the WNBA Atlanta Dream, uh, WNBA Players Association, the Atlanta Dream want their owner, Senator. Kelly Loeffler to sell her shares of the Atlanta Dream for her remarks about Black Lives Matter. It's funny how, as always, you can cheer us on when we wear in your jersey. It's been your entertainment, but you don't care about once the jerseys come off of our bodies. It's none other sad but true story and proving it once more. All is about entertainment value when it comes to us. We're just the entertainment, the dark entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like I said, it goes to show, you know, how much, uh, you know, they they really care there when, when it all comes down to it, man. Uh, that lady, I from my understanding, really has no business being an owner anyway. Uh, we know we know where her interests lie uh, as far as uh, social matters. You know we, where she sides, man. So, you know, the onus is on her to step down at this point. The WNBA should. Uh, uh, if they're worth anything, if worth anything at all, man, it should make her uh, go ahead and step down and sell her shares uh, of the team there. Let's move to the NBA bubble. Um, let's start here. Um, somehow, Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports and Sham Sharania of the Athletic and Stadium reported that there have been the NBA snitch hotlines receiving multiple tips. And sources say there's Chris Paul's behind it. Um, bro, if it's a non tip line, how's it been leaked to Haynes and Sharania, and how was it brought back to Chris Paul? <laughs> I don't understand. So we an anonymous tip line. How are they getting enough information? Oh, uh, 
yeah, like you said, you know, I wouldn't put it past to Chris Paul or somebody petty like that. Uh, you know, Chris Paul, president of the Players Association, Chris Paul, who hasn't won a ring yet, you know, is angling, <laughs> you know, for, for uh, any opportunity he can, he can get, you know, to get closer to a ring. Um, I'm trying to think of other guys, like, they, they would be that petty. Like, if, if it is indeed true, that could possibly, you know, I think LeBron, LeBron would do it. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, this, yeah, this this uh, tournament here that's uh, uh, set up is, is, you know, mainly for him, really, you know, for him to try to get his fourth ring. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure he's gung-ho, wants to do everything he can uh, within the rules and maybe with, maybe outside of the rules also as far as uh, snitching. Um, yeah, man, like for those other couple of guys, I, I, I can see like a Jimmy, Jimmy Butler being petty, maybe like it's a guy he doesn't like on another team, maybe calling and uh, dropping the dime. Like, I can see a few guys down there uh, snitching, man, hitting the hotline number up. Most definitely. And <laughs> Rashawn Holmes is just quarantined 10 days because he got some Uber Eats. He comes out of his words, like, bro, like you can have somebody bring it in for you. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, they going to learn today as far as the rules, man. They're not playing down there. It's, it's strict. Uh, you cannot – you can't cross the gun line. They got a gun, a gun line down there in, in Orlando, and you cross that gun line, man, it's going to be problems. And, bro, a lot of them been out there fishing on the lake. I was thinking about this. Chris Paul's going to snitch on some dudes who get on the boat to go, go, go get them some in the lake. I'm telling you. He's going to seek out to the lake on a boat to get them some to see back in. That's, that's, that's how you can do it. You can get out of the bubble by getting on, getting on the lake out there. So, from, from yeah, this, like, my Florida knowledge from knowing some being in Florida, I don't know, I know what the lay of the land. You get on a boat in the lake, you can go get something, get back to the bubble. But Chris Paul gonna tell yeah. him, or LeBron gonna do something. Somebody gonna stitch on somebody. Somebody stitch, man. Somebody tell. Him. You know, I was like, man, these dudes really out here is tripping, bro. Like for real, for real. And another thing we have is like guys inside the bubble testing positive. Harrison Barnes, uh, Monte Morris, the Nuggets, and Michael Beasley. So this is what this is what concept kind of gets shaky, bro. Because no guys traveled from their home markets, right? And you know, practicing together, not really. You know, you, you can be negative today and positive tomorrow, right? So that's the yeah. issue, I think. Beyond the Disney staff, if you get past mm-hmm. this first initial period. From they were traveling from their home markets, you may be okay. Mm-hmm. Besides the Disney staff coming in every day, maybe, maybe. Right. What's your, what are your yeah. thoughts, bro? Man, like I said, it's, it's uncharted territory. This is unprecedented. You're going to get more guys, you know, notably, you know, as far as big names. Uh, the other day, Russell Westbrook uh, tested positive. Man, like I, I'm not going to be surprised at all if you hear more big names. You know, in the days, the weeks to come, test positive. But my thing is, like, what happens? Like, you take a uh, Donovan, not Donovan Mitchell, but um, I think some other guys in the West Conference right now, like maybe James Harden test positive, man. You know, uh, maybe somebody big for the Lakers, AD or somebody test positive. Like, you know, while the games are going on, like, like what what happens then, man? Does the whole team? You know what I'm saying? At that point, have to quarantine. Like, like, how does that really work, man? Um, and the NBA doesn't really know. You know, I guess you pretty much, you know, you're taking it, you know, case by case at, at this point, man. But like I said, this this is going to be the craziest thing I think we've ever seen. It's going to be like the just the most surreal and, and weird thing that we're going to watch these, you know, uh, great players out there playing in the playoffs and no fans and you know, I was watching the TVT tournament. I don't know if you had a chance to catch that uh, uh, the other day, Bob. I did. Uh, where they play, yeah, where they play for a million dollars, man. And you know, it was just weird, man. Like they're playing in like a convention center, stuff, man. Like a convention center gym, and you know, all you hear is just you know the players talking and the shoes squeaking. You know, uh, it, it's, it's different, man. It really is. I, I guess after a while, you get used to it, but it's just, it's just hard to imagine. You know, NBA playoffs going on and no home. No home court advantage, no fans. You know, we're just out there like watching, almost like AAU tournament pickup mm-hmm. basketball or something. It's crazy, man. Yes, it will be. Well, bro, tell people what you got for them this week 
on the Central's AF podcast and recap for last week's show if you got time. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Essential AF podcast, man, the the number one rated podcast in the Mid South. I'm sure I'm making those numbers up, but damn it, we are going to be number one <laughs> at some point in time. Oh uh, man, last week, man, you know we talked about Will and Jada, the entanglement. Uh, we talked about uh, Ti versus Fifty. We talked about Terry Crews. Um, so you know, coming up this week, man, you know we got to get into some, some also some bigger stories coming up. Uh, you know, Nick Cannon. Uh, you know, being fired from Viacom, man. What's what's going to happen to him, and you know, and, and everything in regards to that, uh, man. So some other some other big stories we're going to talk about as well, man. So make sure you tune in, check us out. You can catch us live on Facebook, uh, catch us live on YouTube. Hashtag Essential AF Podcast. Uh, make sure you like and share, and uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Bro, I got one bonus one for you. In the Boston Bone segment, we talked about a Florida story of a Florida woman threatening to shoot up her man because he broke up with her because she was going to bars, pool parties, and kickbacks. He broke up with her. She tried to shoot him at, at his apartment through the day, through, from the outside to the window. So what are your thoughts? I mean, my man wanted to live and not die. He tried to kill him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you said Florida, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Netflix has not come up with this yet, boss. <laughs> maybe me and you need to get together and develop this. Like, but there needs to be a Netflix series documentary called Florida Man. All right, and you know, we, and basically, you just kind of go and tell the stories. Maybe have like actors reenact. The uh, the, the, all the different news stories in the Boss Report, man, over the years of all the Florida <laughs> incidents, man. I think that is a uh, a million dollar idea, man. So, yeah, Boss, what's up, man? Like, I want to be, I want to give a producer credit, man. Hey, that's a great idea because the Florida man stories are one of a kind. It really is. <laughs> it is. Like, I'm surprised nobody has come to Netflix with this yet. Hey, we need to get together and write this up. <laughs> I'm serious. Let's do it. I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm man. with Let's you. Do it. That's a great ass idea. I'm with you. So we gonna do Let's that. Go. We gonna do that for Let's sure, bro. Go. Let's get that going. Well, folks, JC Sports Report. Check out his podcast. Check out the Boss Report. Bossmanshow.com. Folks, we are out. My heart skips skipping the beat. You're not close enough, so that space between you and me, let's lose it. The way you're dancing, swaying to the music, girl, that body and how you move it. Every time you cross my mind, girl, I lose it. Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. All the stars are closer. Tell me what you gonna do to me. Confrontation ain't nothing new to me. You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Okay. Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Till the tears run down from my eyes, Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. All right, folks, been the Boss Man Show. I'm on the Boss Report with my man Bone. Bone, I hear that we got some fellas ruffled in the bubble, Bone, about, you know, our interview last week with Coach Van Gundy and um, <laughs> our great segment at which uh, certain individuals in the bubble don't like, Bone. Yeah, for some reason, man. Uh, my man Bud, aka the biggest stan on earth, he's a, a stan of this show, man. He's like, and if, if you don't know what that means, Bud, look it up. You are a stan. You are a stalker. Why are you warm about us? We got a job to do down in the bubble. Exactly. Like, 
why, 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 why is our little old Sega so important to you? <laughs> Yeah, man. Like it's, it's like that saying, man. Like coaches say, do your job. So what about your own job, man? Go, go. What about being out coached again by Nick Nurse, man? Stop warming up. <laughs> exactly, because we're we're discussing Florida man news, not Wisconsin man news. All right. <laughs> so like, I don't get the correlation to why it's so that. important. Yeah, I understand. Like, if we're talking about the Buck news, or we're talking about Nick Nurse news, or talking about Bad Beard news, then yeah, then I, I would get it. But don't worry about us. Do your job. Thank you. So with that, folks, been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. It's the boss report. First story is this bone. Florida man cannot get tested for COVID nineteen. He spears the lady at the testing site, and he cuts off his Johnson in, in, in response. So I better get a test. <laughs> he hold it up as a trophy. I cut off. When you tried to keep it, as a teacher, they just held it up in pride. Like, what, what's the point of that? Like, <laughs> to spear her is whack at the first place, but then it cover your own self. To mutilate yourself to prove a point makes no point at all, folks. <laughs> it never does. <laughs> it never, never ever. It never does. Um, Florida man teacher, big Florida man governor, not to open schools, saying, "quote Kids would die, teachers would die, blood would be on you in Donald Trump's hands." A Florida man said that. Yes, to the governor. Florida, Florida is anti-government, anti-Trump? Yes. Wow, it's a new day right there. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, that's his people. That's, that's his base, usually. So, wow, good good for homies. You know what? Because there ain't no damn sense. Because they're going to say they're going to close gyms and they're going to close eateries, but they demand to open schools in the moment. It's like, come on, man. That makes no sense. None at all. None at all. And get this. Florida man group, a good one, intelligently speaks out against Florida man education commissioner who works for Florida man governor and wants to open all costs saying, quote, they some dumb asses, some kill people. How about, how about we kill them? Wow. <laughs> Damn. Well, he went a little extreme, but killing, killing everyone. That's kind of extreme. But what's going on here, uh, boss man? Why, why are the last two reports making common sense? I thought it was a Florida man. Thing. I was shocked, Bone. I wanted to, I was going to try to show you that there are some people in Florida who have sense. Maybe. <laughs> I, I'm blown away that this, these last two posts have been about common sense and doing what's right. Come, I need I need more Florida man news, man, of, of, our, of our usual stuff. <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, Florida man in trouble because he may have infected Florida's top Republicans with coronavirus at a largely maskless Duval County event in Jacksonville. Uh, Duval. Did we have a Jackson report last week? We I sure mean, did. Duval. You know, because nothing goes on down in Duval. So, I mean, you know, Jacksonville is one of the largest, corniest uh, cities in America. No offense, Jacksonville, but, you know, just, I'm just calling how I see it. So, yeah, ain't nothing really going on in Duval. So, about time you have, you know, you know something tightly going on. Exactly. Florida man arrested with a missing scalp. Oh, my God. Tries to rob truck driver. Gets tackled. Cuts off his penis and gets tied up until police arrive. Now he has no scalp and no Johnson. <laughs> yes. First of all, how do you get no scalp? Like, how does that happen? How do you go about doing that? <laughs> That's a good question. No idea. Like, do you do it to himself? Because if I get like a cut on my face shaving, I'm like, ah, that hurts. I can't imagine digging deep into your scalp and peeling back yourself, man. You like your own wig. That, that makes no sense, man. Yeah, he had no scalp at all. Like, it looks scary. <laughs> looks oh scary. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. Our, our, our man's back. Florida man governor accused by the Grim Reaper on Miami Beach. The one who addresses the Grim Reaper every week. 
of trying to kill children and ignoring doctor's advice at the behest of his boo thing, Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm always intrigued by the, the Reaper guy. The Reapers usually wear like those giant heavy cloaks and usually they're black. Like you're already on the hot stand in the father's son. I'm intrigued. At how good is this dude having us? <laughs> first of all, you're going to be out there in the heat, out in the Rona area with all that moth on you, right? Now you're out there in the midst of Rona. You're down, uh, over, over down, down there by ground zero. So I wonder how Reaper's still alive, man. I don't know. I guess he's because he's blessed but my man the real reaper probably coming to see you in, in your all black cloak exactly <laughs> oh my goodness oh here we go Florida man arrested after exposing himself to a woman drinking coffee at her condo she doesn't respond to his to the to top him off he cuts his mouth off <laughs> So he's saying, like, you don't want it, I don't want it either. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm trying to say, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll show her. I'll show her. If you want my penis, I'm going to cut it off. And I'm going to hold it up as a trophy. Like, but, <laughs> did they get it, like, stuffed and put it on, on, on the mantle? Like, what, what, what's the point of this? <laughs> okay, that's my point about Florida, man. Why are you carrying instruments in your pocket that can cut off your own Johnson at all times? Yeah. And how high are you to do it, y'all? Because the, the first incision must feel like death. So to, 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 to carry on and continue to cast a hand, literally a hand, like that must be high. Come on, man. That must be hurtful. You got to be high. Sky high. I'm, this thought scares me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. Naked, sweating, Ocala, Florida, man. Now doing DUI charge after running stop sign on a riding moor. Of course. But I wasn't even thinking he was going to be in a car. I knew off the bat this dude was not going to be in the car. I knew from from the from jump he was going to be on a all lawnmower, some old John Deere instrument. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have to hear the whole thing. He said, make a man in the middle of the street. I knew he was already on a lawnmower. That's the purpose. Oh, goodness gracious. Florida woman calls black woman a good little slave over wearing a mask. Yeah, I heard about that. Man. I actually saw the headline and I just skipped through it because I, I didn't want to get angry anymore, man. Because I know sister had great restraint, man. Let me just say right there. She had great restraint because old Karen would have been put on her sister, man. Exactly. Exactly. Get this. Florida man lights Catholic church on fire with pressures inside because the priest tried to touch his girlfriend. <laughs> the, the priest probably saw a nice round one, right? That's, that's usually how it happens, right? The yeah. priest saw a nice round one, one to touch it, right? Mm-hmm, probably. Man, man of God. He's a, he's a good God. He saw that, probably. It usually happens in a Walmart, so... Happening now in the in the, in the temples and the, of worship, man, these, these cats don't play around when it's a nice big round one. Exactly, Florida man banned from Publix after highly irate co- confrontation over needing to wear a mask in, in, in the sub line and the deli. No. I got to, I got to say last week, man. Let's just keep going like a cartoon, yo, and get those giant saws like Buck Bunny at me and just saw off the stage. Y'all, y'all are dying by the bunches every day because of no mask, and y'all continue to fight this saying it's my country, it's America. I don't need a mask. Well, fool, when your chest starts to get all clogged up and you start having trouble breathing, you're gonna be begging for that mask, man. Y'all come fools. Exactly. Florida man and three sons sold a toxic solution of tens of thousands of people as a cure for COVID-19. He says, quote, this was happening out. Is that, what they, is that the Trump cocktail? I think it is. They cut cocktail. <laughs> you know what? 
natural selection. For all you fools who want to drink chlorine and drink and drink uh drink bleach and think it's a cure, by all means. I mean, I'm not saying to do it, but if you want to do it, if you're that dumb enough to do it, then by all means, natural selection. Let's weed y'all fools out. Oh my God. Florida men arrest after driving car into occupied church, setting on fire, leading cops on a high speed chase while naked listening to Keith Sweat. Oh. So he's a viral? <laughs> no, he's not. He's Latino. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of that's adjacent. I mean, because I heard Keith Sweat, and I immediately thought he's a viral. Because I don't know any, any, anyone that's not ever ill that's listening to Keith Sweat like that. But okay, listen to Keith Sweat, drive that car in a Ford church. I mean, that's like a Tuesday in Florida, right? I mean, that's just a normal day, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. Man, oh man. Ooh, wee. Florida man arrested on charge of using coronavirus aid for Medicare fraud, totaling over $5 million and buying porno. At the porn dealership called the Florida Porno Express. You tried to buy porn? Yes. He tried to buy the whole porn store. Thank you. So he's like committing like, he's committing, a, so he stole money to buy porn? Yes. Don't these fools know that porn's free now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I heard the grapevine that, that pornography is free now these days. So, <sighs> so what's the point of committing larceny and then just, I don't make all sense, man. Oh my now god. Now like, now like oh my god. Oh, my, oh, this story is funny. Um, Florida men hospitalized after a non frozen iguana runs into to the bike causing a crash. <laughs> it's a lie. You fools don't know yet. I'm, I'm up here in Jersey. And even I know that those things are not dead. Dead. They're in a dormant state. They're sleeping. They are not dead, suckers. Y'all don't get it yet. They don't. They don't. Oh my God! This story is uh, it's pathetic. <laughs> Florida man. Stone Cold stuns <laughs> volunteers asking for COVID aid for their nursing home. Well, he's stunning old folks? He's, well, they, they were young volunteers. He Stone Cold stunned them saying they were faking, they were weenies, and it was a hoax. <laughs> so he, he, his, his prior choice is a Stone Cold stunning, huh? <laughs> that was the weapon of choice. <laughs> nah, nah, it, it wasn't gonna throw the hands up. It was just kick a D in the belly and then get a whole son of her. Exactly. I'm trying to raise money for COVID 19 relief for nursing home. Like, seriously, dude? Yeah. Yeah. That, he, he had gone mess, man. He, had, he was on mess and he thought he was at WrestleMania and he, he was fighting he was fighting the rock and he's like, you know, I'm gonna get that guy a stone cold stunner. <laughs> oh my god. Uh oh. Florida man arrested the Pentagon Uber Eats driver who did not leave his order where he told him to leave it in, in the Uber Eats app. So where do you want the food? What, what, what do you want? On the porch? Or something? Or a back door? Well, I don't know the that. back the door, but he put it on the front door. So that, so that deserves uh, a pedigree? Yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I, I want to know how weak was this Uber Eats driver, man, because the pedigree is intricate kind of move where you know, that kid got in the belly they get his arms you know, behind his back so it's just a lot of strength and, and power to get that you know, move put on somebody so how weak was this Uber Eats driver man that's on him very very weak oh my goodness this is one of our ill bone Florida woman arrested up smuggling cocaine in her box on a flight from Orlando to Miami why could she just drive it you just drove that lady yeah. First of all, yeah, you're right about that, and that's one expensive box. Cost a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of dollars up there, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that, that, that was a drive. Why, why can't just, yeah, why can't just drive? Yeah, I don't understand that. I'm not telling anyone how to do their job, but I would think driving is a little easier, more convenient. Yes. 
Florida man convinces town mayor to let him spray the town with hydrogen peroxide to kill COVID-19. And use, he also let him spray bleach as well. Who does that sound like, Bone? Yeah. He must have been watching the commercial late at night and, and saw a Trump ad come up. <laughs> I didn't go outside and bleach near you. Just spray this and we'll, we'll, all, we'll all be, be cured. Was he like in like on the it was Trump Duster plane or he had a hose and just spray it? I want to know, know more about this. He had one of them big old, like 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 like, like a street sweeper almost, but the big boy was spraying out. The, the, the peroxide and the bleach. He had peroxide and bleach right, right behind him. Uh, so he, I can just see this dude and, and like uh, those big old d- d- dump trucks on the Zamboni and just driving down the street to spraying people. I, I, I can see it. That's still Florida. Yes. This is also Florida. Florida man taking risk by singing and reading to relax gators during the pandemic. They're gators. They can't read or write. Why are you singing and reading to them? So he's, he's reading like a, like a lullaby to alligators, to, I guess to appease them, to soothe them. Because they say like, you know, super savage beast usually music, but I guess he figured he should read like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish to, to an alligator and, and might actually appease the alligator, huh? Yeah, he, he'll be eating real soon. Yeah, um, idiot Florida man governor says we can open Home Depot, we can open schools too. Yeah, yeah, because it makes, it makes total sense to uh, <laughs> because Home Depot is open, you can have your young children, you know, who aren't as strong as far as immune systems go into into a uh, into a school where the germs are all in the air. It makes sense, you know what? Because Kids never cough and sneeze on each other at all in school. It never happens. Exactly. Um, Florida man and Miami cop arrested and charged for chasing a pregnant woman on her stomach and lying on the police report about it, saying she attacked him. She attacked them. They said that a pregnant woman attacked them. Mm-hmm. So their only recourse was to taste on the belly, right? Yes. So what is the pregnant woman with, and uh, what else is she? Uh, hours. Of course, of course. And the the officer, the coward, is what? Not 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 Five us. Hours? Yeah, yeah, of course. Because you know what? Nothing scarier than, than than a pregnant sister, I guess, huh? Yeah. These cowards out here, man. Yes. Naked fleeing Florida man arrested and tased after a bedroom brawl with girlfriend and him hitting her with a rock bottom because she wouldn't top him off. <laughs> so do you think like by giving a rock bottom that she would acquiesce? Like, you know what? I'm going to do this for you because that rock bottom is so good. love me. <laughs> what, what, is, what is your end game, brother? If you're going to rock bottom a woman He's not calling back for seconds, man. That's a wrap for you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. These people. These people in Florida. My goodness gracious. And final story today, Bone, is this. Florida men arrested out of, out of the breaking in the home with a steel chair and bat trying to get his girlfriend and baby back after, after being caught cheating with a woman off Instagram in a stolen truck. He broke, he broke into the house with a steel chair and a bat? Yes, it's to get his baby and girlfriend back after she called him missing with an Instagram woman in a stolen truck. So you got Instagram, man. You got to stay off that, people. And then, no, it's no joke, man. It's no put to be for, for, for young, horny men after they get caught up, man. <laughs> but he walked in the house with a steel chair and a, and a, and a bat like he was going through a hardcore holly match. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what. You know, no hardcore. <laughs> yes, I remember Florida men are very interesting, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and, well, you know that your boy, Capito, ruled it wrestling as like a uh, essential uh, business down in Florida. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the idiot, the COVID idiot governor, yeah. Yeah, because. Uh, yeah, you know, that wrestling. <laughs> so, 
these Florida men must watch Raw and SmackDown every week. Oh, they watch it. They 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 DVR. They, they, they DVR and they watch it and they watch that rap it. It's real me, still brother. It's real to me. Oh yeah, they just still watching that. Because I mean, think about it. we've heard the Pedigree this week, a spear, a rock bottom, a steel chair in the back, like the stunners. Yeah, I mean. It's- Wrestling is probably the second biggest sport after football, right? I mean, it's like it's like God, football, and wrestling down there, huh? And NASCAR. And NASCAR, hey, of course. Of course NASCAR. And being naked and with iguanas, myths, and... Being naked on your John Deere. <laughs> and cutting yeah, off your Johnson's as well. They should have that as a sport down in Florida. John Deere, a naked John Deere race. They have, I, mean, I, I ain't watching it, but I'm sure people would down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Bone, what are your thoughts on this report, my brother? Well, I, I like them to cut off their own jump out of fight <laughs> show the female that's not going to service them anymore. I'll show you. If, if you don't service me, I'm going to cut it off so that no one can have it. That always gets me. That always makes the whole thing for me. <laughs> in, 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 in the most far away. Yes. And, and you know... And of course, the women will be naked this week as well. Like, and today, today, born for the first time probably ever, we've had two Florida men with since. Yeah, but that was kind of a downer though. That, that almost killed my high because you know, we, uh, you know, usually this is this is just equipped with all guys. <laughs> we had two gentlemen that like made sense, and, and it kind of killed my buzz at first. Well, I, 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 I won't do that to you next week, but I'll make sure we don't have any sensible Florida men at all anymore. I'll make sure of that. <laughs> yeah, please, Florida men, just keep doing you. Don't make any sense, because you kind of ruined our segment that way. This is our Florida man nonsense news. So you can't make sense on Florida man news. And I'm pretty sure that if I ever get on the beat of an NFL team again, I'm pretty sure that I'm banning Jacksonville. I'm pretty sure I am. <laughs> Or Tampa, or Miami. Yeah, Tampa, Jacksonville, Miami. I'm pretty sure I'm not banned from those cities. I'm probably banned from all, 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 yeah, all, all the cities in Florida. I'm probably on the list now. I'm probably on the list. I'm getting banned. And I, probably I Green Bay, too, because of a certain beard, certain guy with a beard who might try to oh, yeah. keep you from yeah, Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy with a patchy beard, he'll probably call the Packers and, 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 and have him block the gate. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> He'll try to get you banned, like he's gonna get me banned from Pfizer form as yeah. well. Like, really? I mean, it's, it's not, it's not his, it's not his court, it's not his team. But somehow, some way, he'll probably get me banned from, you know, from Lambeau Field. But you know what? I will bring the anti bud I will bring Nick Nurse as my, uh, as my companion, and I'll get right in there. So they can him. Yeah, because Nick Nurse doesn't choke. <laughs> Other people I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nick, Nick Nurse is an anti anti bird, so I can get in with him. It's real Nick Nurse. Their team came to the bubble in a Black Lives Matter bus. Oh yeah, that wasn't happening in Milwaukee. <laughs> that wasn't happening with that coach and that city. But that city is so segregated. It was not gonna happen in that city. So most definitely, well, folks, that's the boss support this week. Boss and Bone, check us out. Bossmanshow.com. And we're on YouTube now as well. We may have some more on YouTube down the road for you folks, but check us out. I love it. I love your commentary on the boss report. We keep it coming for you. We are out. And if you don't know, now you know, you know.